Hello and welcome to this Ramp Interactive Game Sheet App Tutorial. Before we begin, I would like to direct you to the description of this video where you will find timestamps to specific portions of the video. Additionally, contact information for Ramp support is also located there. In regards to using the Game Sheet app, a couple of notes. The Game Sheet app codes are provided through your team login, which will come from your league. Underneath of each league game that has been created, depending on whether or not you are the home or visitor team, you will be able to see certain codes. The home team can view all the codes for the game, as often they will have one of their parents in the timekeeper box, while the visiting team can only see the visitor code. It is therefore the responsibility of the team manager or coach who has been provided this login to ensure these codes are distributed properly. In the case where your league actually pays for timekeepers, the league also has access to all the codes to distribute those codes to the timekeepers. The home and visiting team, however, can always get their codes, again, from the team logins, which are provided by the league. In regards to using the Game Sheet app, you should use your personal cellular device to complete these actions. There is no need to have a tablet. It's designed to work on each person's own mobile phone. The timekeeper, the home staff, the visitor staff, as well as the officials. We will now begin this tutorial. To get the Game Sheet app, you can find it in either the iOS App Store or in the Google Play Store. Once you have downloaded the app by searching Ramp Game Sheets or Ramp Game Sheet, you will be asked to create an account if you do not already have one. You can use the same account you have for the Ramp Team app if you have created one there, or just create a new account by going to Create Account entering an email, password, first name, last name, and cell phone number. You can also find your password under Forgot Password, and lastly, enter your credentials to sign in. This is a difference from the previous Game Sheet app, which did not require an account. Once you have signed in to the Game Sheet app, you will see your home page. Here, you will see any codes that you have previously entered in, as well as the space to enter additional codes. Simply enter the code and hit the search button, and if the code exists, it'll be added to your account. From here, we can review all the games we have added to our account and see what type they are by viewing the bottom row of the game details. In this demo, we're gonna go through this in the process it would be gone through in a regular game starting with the home and visitor team, then the game sheet user, and finally ending on the official. So we will go to this home team code by tapping on it, which will pull up the game. As the home or visiting team, you are able to view all the details of the game that have been entered, but you are unable to change them. You can see the goal details, the penalty details, the goaltender details, etc but you cannot change any of them. What you can do and should do as a home or visiting team is enter in your roster information. Your roster information will automatically populate here with the ability for you to adjust the player numbers as well as select which players are attending the game. This is important as depending on what you check off here, these players will be available to the game sheet admin to check off for goals and penalties. In addition to this, you can update information by tapping the player, such as whether or not they are a captain or assistant captain, the ability to edit them by tapping the edit button. This may be restricted by your association. Not all groups will allow this, but if it is, you'll be able to tap it to view this page and update all of the information, as well as delete a player. Again, may not be available to all associations. It is dependent on your league. After checking off all the players and making any needed updates to numbers, etc., you also have an Add Player button at the top. Again, possibly restricted by League if this button appears, at which point you can add a new player by filling in the required information. Once you have done this for both the players and staff, with the staff interface being entirely identical, with the ability to edit, delete, change who is attending, and add staff, which all, once again, can be restricted by your league. 
The only other item is to sign off on the game sheet by hitting the sign here button. This will allow the home team staff, whether it be the head coach or whoever is filling in for the head coach, to sign off on said game. These signatures are saved directly in the system and can be found by scrolling down past the listed staff. You can also view which visitor players are playing in this game as well as staff and check their signatures as well. That only leaves the hamburger menu, which basically allows you to quickly jump to all the aforementioned menu items, as well as the officials and official notes write up. Again, depending on your league, these buttons may not appear. Here you can see which officials attended the game, as well as the official notes and write-ups, which have been submitted by the officials. Once you have done your part checking off players and signing off, the only other reason for you to use the Game Sheet app would be to review the information that was put into this game, looking at goals, penalties, etc. After the home team, we have the visitor team. This interface is identical to the interface we just looked at, except it is for the visitor team. The visitor team is able to view all of this information. The same way the home team is, the only difference being underneath of the roster area, they have access to the visitor players and visitor staff. Now that we have covered the home and visitor team, we'll move to the game sheet admin. This would be the next person to work on the game. The game sheet admin is the person who will be filling in the game sheet from the timekeeper box. From their code, they are able to see all the other codes to supply them to teams and officials if need be, as well as the controls for the game. Mark game as complete will submit this game to the association website with the new results. Live scores will share live updates to the website if you have an internet connection. If you have that turned off, nothing will show up on the front end of the website until you mark the game as complete. Whether or not it went to overtime or a shootout, as well as just an overview of the game information on this page. So the goals, our ability to set the period length in minutes. This will be blank and needs to be entered by you. I have previously entered this game, which is why it says 20 minutes for all of those. The shots on goal by periods. Again, if your organization would like you to track this, you would enter it here. Power play successes and chances, and then the same information for the visitor team. Finally, at the bottom, we have some basic details about the game the date it was on, what location, the game number, as well as overtime and shootout if those were applicable. After this game details page, the game sheet admin has access to both goals and penalties, which work in very similar fashions. At the top, you have the ability to add a new goal simply by tapping the new goal button, enter the period, the time, the clock time, not inverse, so if it was at the 15 minute mark of the second period or the first period, you would enter that information here. Which team the goal was for, whether it was power play, even strength, shorthanded, etc. Who scored, who got the assist, who got the second assist, and whether or not it's a game winning goal. Hit save, and it will submit this goal unless you have selected the same person for more than one position. You can't have someone assist their own goal, so it's throwing an error message and letting me know I need to change that. Simply shifting this to a different person, not the person who scored, I can now save this goal, and it'll be added to the list of goals right there. The goals are sorted by the time they were scored, and period, by scrolling down. You can additionally edit existing goals by tapping on them, and hitting the edit button or the delete button. Deleting will get rid of a goal entirely. Just refresh the page and it's gone. And editing a goal will pull up all the information of that goal for you to make any changes. Penalties works in a very similar fashion. You have the ability to see all the penalties by the time they happened and the ability to add new penalties with the new penalty button. Similar to goals, you enter the time on the clock. An optional time on 
if there is a goal scored, you can enter what time the player returned to the ice. Again, this is an optional field and does not have to be filled in. The offenses, which is a list of offenses from the league. Which team the penalty was for. And which player or staff. If it's a bench penalty, you can enter which staff member received it or which player more commonly. And if need be, you also have a served area for things like bench minors. Once saved, it will show up underneath of the penalties area. You can additionally, like I mentioned before, edit and delete penalties the same way you would goals. Editing it will pull up the details of that penalty for you to change. Lastly is the area to enter goalie stats. This is usually done at the end of the game where you can view the goalie stats as well as a quick overview of the statistics attributed to each goalie. You can edit and delete by tapping similar to what we've looked at before and by hitting the new goalie button you can choose a team, a goaltender, and enter all the appropriate goalie information such as time on ice, stats, win-loss tie, and whether or not it was a shootout. And they will be added to this page for the home and visitor team to be able to review as well as yourself. Finally, that brings us to the roster area. This should be already completed by the home and visitor team, but if any adjustments need to be made, for example, a team forgot to update a player number, you also have access to that information here and can make updates and changes as needed. Again, certain buttons on this page, as well as the staff pages, could be restricted by your league. So, you can make any changes needed here as the game sheet admin, either adding players or removing players. And finally, you have the hamburger menu where you have a quick access to all of these fields with one additional feature. As the game sheet admin, at the beginning of the game, you will have to add the officials to this game. Now they can either tell you their names or they could take your mobile device to add themselves to the game. You just need to go to officials and there's an add official button here. You can also tap on officials to edit them if they already exist. Simply click add official, enter their name and their position and hit save and they'll be saved to this game sheet. You can also view the write-ups, but once again, only the officials can create and edit them. That is a complete overview of the game sheet admin. The last admin in the system is the officials. The officials will be able to enter their code and download the app and go to the game, usually when it's done, to do two things. The officials, after providing their names to the timekeeper slash game sheet admin, will be added to the game. And at the end of it, they will need to sign off on the game underneath of officials and by hitting sign here, which allows them to sign off on the game, as well as review all the information submitted by the game sheet admin underneath of each applicable menu. They can also create official notes and write-ups, which are write-ups that are tied to this game for the association. These can be simple notes for things that aren't of significant importance, as well as incident reports for more serious items that are usually tied to penalties. Simply type in your information underneath of this notes field and hit save, and it'll be saved to the official notes area. That covers the Ramp Game Sheet app tutorial in regards to setting up and completing games. You also have some interface from this homepage here to update your account settings, log out, etc. If you have any questions about any of this or need any additional support, feel free to contact support at rampinteractive.com or dial in at 866-607-7267. Thank you and have a good day.